So, as I said, there are various choices um, that uh, one has to worry about if uh, if you um, if you use the Canadian distances. Shorter documents tend to be more similar than longer documents. But we can normalize things uh, to get rid of this type of effect. So you divide each component coordinate by the vector's length. So you effectively represent all documents by vectors of length one. That then actually says that the cosine similarity is x dot y because the length of x and length of y is always one. I think something like this is obviously a better thing to do. And you can even do this in three different ways. You normalize by the Euclidean distance. These are actually so-called norms, or the maximum of the component, or the sum of the components. These are just different norms in the space of, uh, in this document space. So, longer documents might be viewed as better. And therefore, ought to get a higher ranking. And so you can fudge your um, similarity to favor long documents. Uh, as we've stressed many times, nobody really knows what algorithms are used by commercial, commercial systems in, in this space, or recommender spaces, or most of these spaces of importance uh, commercially. And so all sorts of fudges are done. And we do not know which fudges are actually successful. This particular fudging is probably not so important. So we're exploiting the number of words as an emphasis of an indication of emphasis because that defines the component of a, of a document. And so that um, number of times a term occurs is called the term frequency. <clears throat> so uh, TF of D and T is actually, uh, in its simplest form, the actual component of the vector representing D in the T dimension. But here's some comment that um, not every term in the document is equally important. I mean, if you have psychology in your document and you're talking about computer science, then probably that document, that's pretty uh, distinctive, because not so many computer science documents have psychology in them. So probably you're doing cognitive science or something like that. However, if you're in a corpus and then your set of documents that study psychology, then this particular word psychology has no discrimination in it at all. So we need to decide what the discrimination power of a term is in our corpus. Remember, a corpus is the collection of documents we're searching. A corpus at its most extreme is all documents in the world. Next most extreme, all documents on the web, and so on. At a lesser extreme, it could be all scientific documents in, say, in Medline or in, or in Sightseer or something like that. Then we need to mathematically set this discrimination. So the weight of a given term should be not just T F D of T, but we should multiply it by the discrimination power for this corpus of um, this term. So that um, even if um, that says if it's got poor discrimination, then um, we shouldn't um, give it much weight. So Karen uh, Spark Jones um, formed a way of described a way a long time ago and how to. Uh, um, 40 years ago, and how to um, one way of getting a discrimination by looking how specific that word is. And so um, the specificity of a word is just the um, effectively related to how often that word occurs. If that word occurs in every document, it's not terribly useful. That was a comment about psychology. It's not very uh, specific if in, in a corpus of psychology documents. So it is, however, it will only occur in a small fraction of computer science documents. So we make that mathematically um, um, more precise by um, actually defining the number of documents containing a term T is called the document frequency. And then we uh, do something which is called TF-IDF term frequency. Uh, 
dash inverse document frequency by taking the term frequency, the number of times a term occurs in each document, and divide it by the uh, by the document frequency, the number of the the uh, number of documents containing the term t. So this is effectively a normalized occurrence. So here we have the total number of documents containing t, and this is the number of times uh, t occurs in my document. So this is just a more precise way of defining my vectors. And this is even more um, precise, which is um, got a logarithm and um, the, uh, is defined as term frequency times the log of um, number of documents divided by the um, number of documents containing T. So this is uh, actually pretty different from 1 over D, which we had on the previous thing, or N over D of the uh, work. But um, this log dependence is, uh, it, it gives better results. This again is not so, um, I don't think it's entirely obvious this is true, and it requires a deeper a presentation the one I have here to discuss that. So that's that basically we were discussing on the previous few slides exactly how to define these vectors. And we ended up by some formula which involved the number of times the term appeared in the document uh, times a log of something which was inversely proportional to the number of documents containing the term T. And there are many variants of this, and this allows us to do, and remember, we're going to take all of this to find our document vectors, and then we're probably going to normalize those document vectors so they all have length one you know, with some particular norm in our space. So this um, model is um, actually pretty uh, easy, intuitive, pretty clear. It's, um, it's, uh, I think uh, got a lot of positives, and it has also lots of uncertainties because you can, um, and you can also it's very adaptable to specific collections, and so there are all sorts of ways you can use the context of your search based on say what users are looking for to get more precise answers. So we know that high-dimensional vector spaces are important and difficult. And we need some uh, particular algorithms which um, work well in those spaces. And so, but all of big data is, most of it is high dimensional vector spaces. So, this is the clustering idea, which um, there are assumptions which um, may not hold in general, but they're not on. Which the first one I would say is pretty reasonable, but closely associated documents tend to be relevant with respect to the same query. The next one is that there are a lot of correlations. The bag of words model is basically wrong. Obviously, there are lots of important correlations between different words, which mean the bag of words is not a good model. 